Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up, as we once again have a look at some of the games coming to the Nintendo Switch in this upcoming week. We'll be covering dates from the 5th of December up until the 11th, and we'll have a quick look at the start at any games that came out last week, but arrived on the eShop too late to be included in last week's video. Last week was a very good week for new releases, and a couple of weeks before that weren't bad either. Is this week going to match up? Well, let's find out. Starting with the games that snuck out last week after our video went live, first up we have Kronos Before the Ashes. This game has been out before and was an Oculus Rift game I believe, although it didn't have the tagline, and this Switch version of course has had the VR elements removed. Whilst the term Souls-like gets used a lot these days, I think it would be very apt to use it in this case, as you make your way around a variety of labyrinths, fighting difficult enemies, needing to really get a handle on that combat and especially the block before fighting a variety of bosses. What this one does do slightly differently is it has quite an interesting age mechanic where every time you die, your character gets one year older. I believe you learn certain perks as this happens, so it's almost as if you are getting more experienced as you get older. It looks to be a decent game by all accounts, and as I said, it is out now. Last week also saw the release of Taiko no Tatsujin Rhythmic Adventure Parts 1 and 2. This series of course already has a rhythm game on the Switch, whereas these games are more adventure games, RPGs if you like, that do have rhythmic elements to them. It has been split into two separate games, Adventure 1 and 2 as I said, but you can buy a bundle that has the two of them together. As far as I can see this one doesn't have a physical release in the West, you can buy a code in a box if you so wish, but you can get a physical version from Asia that I believe has both games on the cartridge. I did see the other day that Switchwatch had covered this game and reviewed it, so I will put a link to their review in the top in comment if you are interested. The first of this week's games then, releasing on the 6th of December, is Super Space Serpent Secondary Edition. This sells for £8.99 and is a twin stick arena based shooter which uses a retro wireframe art style, a whole bunch of neon colours and a synth soundtrack. If this doesn't take you back to the 80s, nothing will. Not a whole lot is written in the blurb other than it says try to beat the handcrafted levels with ever changing enemies using an arsenal of weapons and upgrades. There are a few games like this on the Switch, varying in price. £9 is probably towards the high end of that, which is a shame, but it might be one to keep half an eye on if you like these sort of games. And next, one of the bigger releases for the week, published via Sega, this is Puyo Puyo Tetris 2. The first Puyo Puyo Tetris game is already on the Switch of course, and my wife and I had a lot of fun playing that one when it first came out, quite early in the Switch's life. This sees you being able to play Puyo Puyo or Tetris or of course combine the two in a variety of modes including online and local verses as well as having a story mode. In terms of new additions for this sequel, it says there is a brand new skill battle which introduces character based skills plus item cards that can power up your team. It also says there is a brand new story adventure as well as improved online modes that offer competition in game specific leagues. As much as I enjoyed the first game, I do think as someone that owns that first one, I'd need to see if those improvements are worth the extra price. If you don't own the first one though, and have any sort of love for puzzle games, based on the original, I'm sure this will be a cracking game and well worth your time. Next then, another big one, probably the biggest of the week for a lot of people, this is Doom Eternal, a game that was due to come to the Switch a while back and of course was delayed. This is a sequel to 2016's Doom and the fifth game in total in the Doom franchise. The Switch version is being handled by Panic Button, who have done a fantastic job porting a number of games to the Switch so far, and by all accounts it builds on its predecessor's frantic combat system which sees you rewarded for getting on the front foot and being in enemies' faces as well as a single player campaign you are able to play with two to three players online. Now the big drawback for me and I'm sure many other people in terms of this release is it was announced recently it's not going to get a physical release. This is a huge disappointment for me and for that reason I won't be getting this game on the Switch, I just won't pay AAA prices for a digital game. Talking of prices, they haven't actually listed them on the eShop yet, I'm assuming it will be £50, $60, Euros, about 80 Australian dollars. And for those of you eager to pick it up, this one is releasing on the 8th. They will fear you. Next up, 
Next up, an interesting looking one, this coming via Team 17, this is Monster Sanctuary. This will sell for £15.99 and describes itself as a monster taming game fused with a Metroidvania. It plays from a side on view, uses pixel art and says that you will explore a Metroidvania inspired world whilst using the power of your monsters to allow you to explore further and expand that world. Cutting down vines, smashing walls and gliding over gaps. You will need to hatch, collect and train monsters from across the world and then build your team. Every monster has a unique skill tree and you will then clash in tactical 3 vs 3 combat. It has both single player and online play and I believe has been on early access on Steam and from what I've just seen has very positive reviews as it stands at the moment. It releases on the 8th of December and I'm actually very intrigued to see how this one pans out. Also on the 8th and proving once and for all there is nothing that you can't make a pun out of, this is Shakes on a Plane. Describing itself as a chaotic co-op shaking game for 1-4 to four players. It's nothing to do with shaking yourself about, instead this sees you taking on the role of flight crew on a plane, having to mix up a variety of tasty shakes, burgers, fries etc and dishing out the meals before you land to get a good rating from the passengers. Not so much shakes on a plane, more overcooked on a plane. It has the usual sort of obstacles that get in your way in games such as these, passengers moving about, tables that move as you try to get past, as well as a visit from aliens by the looks of it. These games are always a good time, $17.99 is about standard pricing for these, and if you are looking for a good co-op game in time for Christmas, this one might be the one you're after. Can you tame the chaos? Shakes on a plane. I'm going to give quick mention to the next one, releasing apparently on the 9th of December. This is Ghost Runner. The reason I say that is because I'm sure this game's already out on the Switch. I thought it came out on the 10th of November. In fact, Mark did a performance review for us. I put the link in the top pin comment. I know it's had a patch since then, but I don't know, are they re-releasing it because of that? In fact, if you click on 505 Games on the eShop, it actually displays two different versions of the game, but they are exactly the same thing. I'll mention it because it's on there and it is a big release, but I'm doing so more as an opportunity for anyone watching who knows what's going on with this to maybe stick it in the comments and let us all know. As I said, I'm not quite sure. Coming out on the 10th and selling for £14.99, we have Evolution Board Game. This, funnily enough, is a digital version of the Evolution Board Game. Never played it myself, but from what I've heard, the board game itself is very popular and this digital version did very well, by all accounts, when it came out last year elsewhere, winning a number of awards. It says that this is a game of adaptation, with your species needing to evolve in order to survive. For example, if the watering hole is running dry, then you'll need to evolve, growing a long neck to reach the food in higher places. The features of this game include a tutorial, weekly challenges, a pass and play mode, online multiplayer with skill based matchmaking and a 21 game single player campaign. It's selling for £14.99 which is actually a fair bit cheaper than a lot of the digital board games on the Switch and I would be absolutely shocked if Paul over at the channel Switched On doesn't cover this, I know he likes his board games. If you are interested it might be worth keeping an eye on his channel, I'll put a link to it in the top pinned comment. To play with friends. Or go online and prove your skill. Evolution, the strategy game of adaptation. And the final game for the week then, this is Warplanes World War I Sky Aces. This is selling for just £8.99 and gives you access to around 30 historical planes from the era of World War I. It says that you can choose the flight style that matches your skill set best, with a pilot mode that sees you focusing on air combat and upgrading your plane, or a squadron leader mode which allows you to manage your resources, hiring and training pilots, and expanding your base. That actually sounds quite interesting for the price you're paying. To be fair, it has a very high rating on Steam for what that's worth, and may be worth a punt at this cheap price. It comes out on the 11th. Many call them the last nights of the modern world. So there you have it, there are some other games releasing on the Switch this week. The big one will be Doom Eternal, although I'm sure the lack of that physical release will hurt it in some respects. Puyo Puyo Tetris 2 may well interest some people, and there are some decent looking games around that. Not as good a week as we've had recently, but not too bad either. Please do let us know of any games that you'll be picking up. 
If any more drop on the eShop in the meantime, please do feel free to put them in the comments section and let people know about them. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe of course, and until next time, happy gaming.